Mid-September is peak hurricane season. It's the time of year when Gulf Coast residents hold their breath. The atmosphere is prime. The oceans are red hot. But right now, it's eerily quiet. This is what the Atlantic looked like last year. Lee was gearing up to become a Category 5, and I was gearing up to fly through it. But this year, it's a hurricane graveyard out there. Not a single storm has formed since August 12th, the quietest stretch we've had during peak season in 56 years. Now the question becomes, why? And when will the oceans roar back to life? Experts initially call for a hyperactive season. And while we're still technically a hair above average, we flatlined. To learn more about the mystery of this season, I spoke with two leading experts in the field of hurricanes, Dr. David Reichlicki, my radar's tropical weather expert, and Dr. Philip Klotzbach, renowned hurricane researcher at Colorado State University. They're both equally boggled about this season. Yeah, I just certainly didn't see this coming, um, and I don't think anybody did. <laughs> any, 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 every person I've talked to has been like, you know, WTF, no one's been like, oh, here's the answer. You know. There are four main reasons why the Atlantic is quiet. One was the African monsoon has pushed far to the north, so the Sahara is actually oddly wet. That uh, was unexpected. The African monsoon is responsible for generating tropical waves, or the seeds of later hurricanes. Tropical waves themselves are just clumps of downpours and thunderstorms, and there's always a belt of thunderstorms marching across Africa into the Atlantic. We call this the Intertropical Convergence Zone, or ITCZ. It wraps around the entire world, kind of like a conga line of showers and storms. The ITCZ forms as trade winds from both the northern and the southern hemispheres meet. The air masses collide, so air is forced upwards. That makes a band of showers and thunderstorms. Now, the ITCZ wanders north and south over the course of the year. In early September, it's usually about as far north as it gets, right around 17.8 degrees north latitude. But lately, it's been around 20 degrees north latitude, about 150 miles farther north of where it should be. That's pretty significantly out of bounds. That's been lifting rains up into the desert, giving showers to Libya, Chad, Niger, and Algeria. But that also means the tropical waves have been riding farther north too, exiting offshore near Mauritania. That takes them over cooler waters, where they fizzle from like Nigeria all the way westward to Senegal, that area of the Atlantic, the equatorial Atlantic, is cooler than normal. They've also been inhaling drier air. So the waves coming off of Africa aren't going to be as moist as they should be. So with no seeds, you get no hurricanes. It's a no-brainer. Reason number two is an easy one. It's too warm in the upper atmosphere. That prevents surface air from rising to form thunderstorms. And no thunderstorms means no hurricanes. And it's so dang stable. Like it's just, you have the moisture, but you gotta have some lift and we just haven't had any lift to, you just, it just can't, can't break the cap. Klotzbach traces that upper atmospheric warmth to last year's El Nino weather pattern. But I think a lot more of it is actually just from El Nino. El Nino warms your upper levels. Um, so that's, I think probably the primary reason. Reason number three, we've had extra strong easterly winds in the upper atmosphere. That's working to tear tropical waves apart. But what's happened this year is that we have anomalously, uh, I believe it's eastern shear, the easterlies are a little stronger than normal above the Atlantic. That may change soon though. The shear should get really low in about 10 days. But even when wind shear wasn't an obstacle, we still didn't get storms. Klotzbach showed me a chart that plots favorable shear conditions in blue. So we would have thought there'd be more storms. It's basically been ramrod blue since July. You know, and you know, late June, early July, that's where we get barrel. So you think, okay, we do that in August, you're gonna get another barrel. Nope, zero. And number four, there's a packet of thunderstorms north of Australia over Indonesia. We call it the MJO, or Madden Julian Oscillation. It starts a chain reaction process that cuts back on tropical activity in the Atlantic. I think it's just all these things playing like a 20 to 25% role, and you just add them all up and that's how you get what you get. From here, weather models don't simulate any hurricanes forming over the next 10 days. But thereafter, things might start to change. We'll be back to a low shear, high SST regime 
and the wave should start coming off at lower latitude and the upper temple temp should start cooling and the easterly shear, the background easterly shear will become westerly. So all this stuff should make the season pick up. And with water temperatures so incredibly warm, there could be cause for concern. Anything black is over 30. I mean, you've got over 30 degree SSTs to 45 west at 10 north. I mean, that's, that's nuts. So if anything can get going, it's certainly gonna not run out of fuel. So it is, it is, to me, it's one of these things where like, God, I expect at some point stuff is gonna go. It's unclear whether the Atlantic's main development region or the zone between the Lesser Antilles and Africa will actually ever awaken this season. But soon, we'll have to start watching for homegrown storms in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. This time of year, it's easy for the leftovers of other systems, like pockets of spin-along fall cold fronts, to generate sneaky storms. Yeah, usually climatologically in October and later on towards November, December, that's when you usually get pieces of what we call leftover fronts that dip down into the Gulf of Mexico or into the central Atlantic from these cold fronts that push down. We could also get homegrown storms from something called the Central American Gyre. It's a broad area of spin that sometimes pinches off smaller lobes of vorticity or spin and forms storms. Theoretically, the late season, hot Atlantic, relatively cool tropical Pacific should give you a very strong Caribbean Central American gyre, spit up something there. And if that happens, the Gulf is alarmingly warm. I mean, it's really hot down here. And so, you know, I mean, I would think at some point this is not going to end well. Don't forget the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, the Atlantic, the deep Atlantic, they're still trending way above normal for sea surface temperature. So it really is just a matter of time. But no matter what the atmosphere brings, my radar will be ready. For my radar, I'm senior meteorologist Matthew Capucci. Follow my radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download my radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.